Okay, in this section, um, I'm going to introduce uh, what's sometimes considered to be a little bit of a difficult concept. And again, in, in my opinion, the way to at least introduce the concept is to revisit the hamburger problem that we talked about a couple of sections back. But this is going to be a slightly different hamburger problem. So that being said, let's get started. Let's say that I go home to my wife, and this time I have a slightly different proposition. I say, we're going to have a family reunion, we're going to have a cookout. And I tell her that I have everything set up. I have two hamburger patties, I have 20,000 slices of bread, we're going to heat them up, and we're going to get 10,000 hamburger patty sandwiches out of it, enough to feed everybody in our extended family and make them very happy during our family reunion cookout. And then my wife looks at me like I'm crazy, and what does she say? She says, you screwed up, you don't have enough patties. You only have two patties and you have 20,000 slices of bread. There is no way that you are ever going to be able to make 10,000 sandwiches out of that. Now, let me ask you a question. Again, this may seem obvious to you, but if I wanted to make 10,000 sandwiches, how many patties would I need? You can pause here and think about this. Um, it turns out that I'm going to need 10,000 patties, right? I'm going to need another 9,998 patties in order to make this number of sandwiches. But right now I don't have enough. Uh, the next question that I would ask is, if I had these ingredients, if I actually went to the store and I bought two patties and 20,000 slices of bread, what's the maximum number of sandwiches that I can actually make? Again, you can pause and think about this. The answer is two. I can make two sandwiches because I only have two patties and I need one patty per sandwich, right? So this equation, the way it's written, is, is wrong. Um, basically, what it should say is you have two patties, four slices of bread can make two sandwiches, but you happen to have a huge amount of extra bread. In chemistry, you would call this uh, excess bread, right? It's, it's basically more bread than you will ever need to uh, ma mix with your two hamburger patties. The other thing that you say in chemistry is that this ingredient over here is limiting. It is controlling, or it's, it's, it's the thing that is uh, lim limiting our ability to make 10,000 sandwiches. So in chemistry, um, sometimes people will call this ingredient over here the limiting ingredient. Sometimes they call it uh, the limiting reagent. Reagent is just another word for for chemical or some type of material. So basically, if I came to you and I said, look, I have two patties, 20,000 slices of bread, I'm going to make a bunch of sandwiches, you, in looking at this, you would think to yourself, look, you're, you're, the number of patties that you have is limiting the amount of sandwiches that you can make. You have way more than enough bread um, as far as patties is concerned. And so you're either going to have to increase the number of patties, or you're probably going to have to throw away your extra slices of bread. Either way, this material over here is limiting the amount of, of sandwiches you can make. And this type of problem shows up in chemistry a lot as well. Uh, these types of problems are called limiting reagent problems. Uh, for most of you, this is relatively easy to see because you're accustomed to thinking of sandwiches as you need two slices of bread and you know one thing in the middle or something like that and you can just kind of scan along and it's obvious. In chemistry, because you're getting information sometimes in moles and moles are a little bit weird to understand and sometimes in grams and you have to do conversions, these types of limiting reagent problems are not so obvious all the time. So we're going to do one on the next slide. So here's the next slide and here's the problem. Um, I think I took this from your book. This is a balanced equation over here. It's a, a little bit more complicated. Um, this material over here, in case I lapse into jargon, is called magnesium hydroxide. This over here is hydrochloric acid. This here is uh, magnesium chloride. And this is water, obviously. But the balanced equation is one mole of MgOH2 plus two moles of hydrochloric acid can make one mole of MgCl2 plus two moles of water. Here's the question, or, or this is the way of thinking about it. Um, 
put some blah blah blahs in there because it's not worth uh, writing out again. Um, here's a question. I have 50.6 grams of MgOH2 and 4 grams of HCl. How many grams of MgCl2 can I make? So basically, there, there are a couple of problems with this question. The first problem is that, again, if you look at this equation, all of the information is given to you in moles. One mole of this plus two moles of HCl can make one mole of MgCl2. And in the question, they are giving you the information in grams. And they're asking you how many grams you can make. So there's the first issue. And the way to deal with that is to convert one mole of MgOH2 into grams, two moles of HCl into grams, and one mole of this into grams as well. The second problem has to deal with the limiting reagent. I am basically telling you in this question um, that I have 50.6 grams of this material on the left, and I have four grams of this material on the right. Now, the question is, which one of them is limiting? Which one of them do we not have enough of to use up all of the other starting material? Do we not have enough of this material, or do we not have enough of this material? And you basically have to do a couple of calculations to try to figure that out. Again, you can try to answer this question. You can pause here, take a few minutes to do it, and I will show you how to do it on the next couple of slides. So again, on this slide, I've just rewritten the question and I've rewritten the balanced equation. The question is, how many grams of MgCl2 can I make if I have 50.6 grams of MgOH2 and I also have 4 grams of HCl? The, the difference between this type of problem and the ones that we did in the previous section are, in the previous section, we always assumed that we had more than enough of one of the starting ingredients. Here. I'm not telling you which one we have uh, more than enough of. And so here's the balanced equation again as well. Uh, one mole of MgOH2 plus two moles of HCl can make one mole of MgCl2 plus two moles of water. And so the first thing that I want to do to try to address the question above is to convert all of these uh, pieces of mole information into grams. So what that requires you to do is to figure out how much one mole of MgOH2 weighs, or what the mass of one mole of MgOH2 is. You can do that by looking up all of the, the masses of the pieces in the periodic table. Magnesium is about 24 grams, oxygen is about 16 grams, hydrogen is about 2. We have one magnesium plus two oxygens plus two hydrogens. So two oxygens is 32 grams plus two hydrogens is another two grams, so that's 34 grams, plus magnesium is about uh, 24, so that's 34 plus 24, 58 grams, I believe. And you can do this type of calculation, you have to do this type of calculation, for each of the molecules in this balanced equation. If you do that, you come out with this. Looks like I did it to about the tenth of a gram, so it turns out that one mole of MgOH2 is about 58.3 grams, um, two moles of HCl is about 72.9 grams, one mole of MgCl2 is this much, 95.2 grams, and two moles of water is 36 grams. So over here, I have just rewritten the, the, the equation above using grams instead of moles. And then, here's the first step. We have to figure out which of these materials. Is it the hydrochloric acid that we don't have enough of, or is it the MgOH2 that we don't have enough of? And the way to do that is as follows. You can think of this left side of the equation as saying the following. 58.3 grams of MgOH2 needs 72.9 grams of HCl for them to mix together with each other in order to make this amount of stuff over here on the right. You can think of it backwards, so that's why I have the and here. You can think of it as 72.9 grams of HCl needs 58.3 grams of MgOH2. That's just rewriting it um, with this material here first. But either way, 58.3 grams of MgOH2 needs 72.9 grams of HCl. We can, uh, however, we have 50.6 grams of MgOH2. So how many grams of HCl would I need if I had 50.6 grams of MgOH2, and the 50.6 is coming from this part of the question over here. So if 58.3 grams of MgOH2 needs 72.9 grams of HCl, how much, how many grams of HCl does 50.6 grams of MgOH2 need? 
The way to do that is to set up a ratio again. We say 58.3 grams of MgOH2 needs 72.9 grams of hydrochloric acid, but we don't have 58.3, we have 50.6 grams of MgOH2. How many grams of HCl does 50.6 grams of MgOH2 need? I'm going to skip some steps here because uh, this requires uh, a fair number of steps, so uh, suffice it to say that you need to solve for x over here by cross-multiplying, x turns out to be 63 grams of hydrochloric acid. So if you have 50.6 grams of MgOH2, in order to use it all in this equation up here, in this reaction up here, you're going to need 63 grams of hydrochloric acid. However, do you have 63 grams of hydrochloric acid according to the problem? No, you don't. If you look back over here, we have only four grams of HCl in our problem. So what does that mean? We only have four grams. Uh, what that really means is that the four grams of HCl is limiting. This is limiting the amount of uh, material that we can make in our chemical reaction. In the same way that the two hamburger patties were limiting the amount of sandwiches that we could make in, in the hamburger example at the beginning of this section. So, the, now the question is, if this is limiting how much HCl we can make, how many grams of MgCl2 can we actually make with only 4 grams of HCl? Because uh, the MgOH2 is actually the amount of material that we have extra of. This is equivalent to those 10,000 slices of bread, or 20,000 slices of bread. Um, so here I'm rewriting the equation again, 58.3 grams of MgOH2 plus 72.9 grams of HCl can make 95.2 grams of MgCl2 plus some water. And so the question, or, or I'm highlighting in red here the relevant pieces of information now. If we have 4 grams of HCl, we're saying how many grams of MgCl2 can we make? Well, if we have 72.9 grams of HCl, assuming we have uh, more than enough MgOH2, we can make 95.2 grams of MgCl2. So we write that as a ratio. 72.9 grams of HCl can make 95.2 grams of MgCl2, but we don't have 72.9 grams of HCl. We only have 4 grams of HCl, according to the problem on the previous slide. So how many grams of MgCl2 can 4 grams of HCl make? We solve for x here by cross-multiplying and dividing x is equal to 4 times 95.2 divided by 72.9, and it turns out that we can make about 5.2 grams of MgCl2 if we have 4 grams of hydrochloric acid and 50.6 grams of MgOH2. The reason is that most of this MgOH2, most of this 50.6 grams, is excess. It's extra that we'll never be able to use, and the 4 grams of HCl is the material that is limiting the amount of MgCl2 over here that we can actually make. So that is uh, an example of a limiting reagent problem. Um, some students think of it as somewhat difficult. Um, I think the, the, lar the, the large part of the problem is that it requires uh, several steps. So um, you know you should probably try to get that under your belt, practice it. There should be some practice problems in your book as well. So we finished with the basics of chemical reactions and chemical equations. Um, in the next section, we're going to talk about different types of chemical reactions. So that ends this section.